In GeoPlanner, you work through a simple seven-step geodesign workflow using the action button. Each step builds on the previous, but you can revisit prior steps in the workflow at any time and in any order. You'll notice that as I choose different options from the action button dropdown, the application toolbar reconfigures itself to present a set of tools related to that segment of the workflow. Some of these tools are shared across all of the workflow segments, but many are specific to just one. The application status bar at the bottom of the browser shows us the current planning project, the active scenario, and the currently logged in user. Clicking on any one of these will provide me with more detailed information. Let's return to the project segment. All work in GeoPlanner occurs within a project. Projects are configured with a rule base, which defines the available feature types, their associated symbols and attributes. We provide a number of starter configurations, like the land use planning example you see here, to enable people to quickly get started using GeoPlanner. These types and symbols represent the features I can create using this configuration. GIS professionals can use desktop tools to easily create their own configurations for using GeoPlanner in virtually any industry or organization. GeoPlanner is designed to be easily used by anyone in an organization and as a result facilitates a collaborative approach to design that makes it possible for everyone to participate. I can invite any other user from my organization to join my project team, allowing us to easily collaborate on designs. Design projects need access to a wide range of datasets that provide contextual information about site-specific conditions that influence and impact decision-making. Using GeoPlanner, I can easily discover and use any GIS dataset available to me. This includes my local or file-based data that I can share for use within my organization, as well as a number of ready-to-use public datasets included with the ArcGIS platform, such as the frequently updated Landsat 8 imagery service. In addition to visualizing contextual datasets, designers need to derive new datasets that assess site conditions based on a variety of factors. GeoPlanner allows designers to easily make and share these assessment layers by leveraging the spatial analysis capabilities of ArcGIS. For example, the Calculate Drive Time tool allows me to create a new output layer that can be used in determining suitability of my design based on travel time from known locations. GeoPlanner also gives me access to a more advanced spatial analysis capability that allows me to rapidly generate site suitability layers that incorporate multiple variables and span local, regional, and even global extents of geography. It does this by leveraging weighted raster overlay services provided by ArcGIS. Here we can see a weighted raster overlay service containing over 20 layers of information that can be combined on the fly to generate a site suitability map. For example, to assess erosion potential for my site, I'll use average rainfall, elevation, and slope. Once I've selected the layers to analyze, I need to weight the importance of each one in my model. In this case, I have started with equal importance to all three inputs, and the result shows me the erosion potential for my site. When I zoom out, the model is reprocessed on the server, and the resulting suitability map is returned for the entire United States. I can easily adjust the relative importance of my input layers, rerun the model, and quickly view the results of the new analysis at any scale. Being able to make and visualize site suitability layers is important, but we can do even more. GeoPlanner allows you to interact with these suitability layers directly as you sketch design alternatives. GeoPlanner has many tools to enable the design of alternative scenarios. If I click one of my drawing tools, you'll see the corresponding feature types defined in my configuration that are available for sketching into my design layers. As I sketch features, I can view an interactive dashboard that gives me immediate feedback. In this case, we see a pie chart showing the distribution of feature types within my current design. If I click on an individual slice of the pie, I can see how a specific type of feature in my design overlays with any of my site suitability assessment layers. As I add new features, 
or update existing features, this dashboard allows me to immediately see the impact of those changes. In this case, we are viewing the overlay of residential areas with erosion potential, but I can easily switch the dashboard to show the suitability overlay against any assessment layer in my project. The dashboard in GeoPlanner can also help me quantify the impacts of my design decisions. Each gauge has a gray dial that displays the current value of a user-defined Key Performance Indicator, or KPI. The optional orange dial is used to show a target value for a given KPI when appropriate. Here, the gauge is configured to show the estimated number of housing units supported by our plan and indicates that we have a target of 250. When I add another residential land use area to my design, you will see that the gauge updates to provide a new estimate for the number of housing units in the plan. This was calculated automatically based on the configuration rule base that defined an attribute representing the estimated houses per acre for each land use category. These dashboards can also be used when comparing alternative scenarios in a side-by-side -side mode. My split pane map shows me the visual differences between my designs. I can easily navigate either map and GeoPlanner will keep the extent synchronized to facilitate easy visual comparison. I can also display my dashboard to compare the suitability assessment and metrics between the two designs. In this case, we can see that in my original plan, the majority of my land use is allocated as industry. In the design on the right, the proposed plan, I can see that the majority of land use is allocated as office. In terms of number of housing units, I can also quickly see that the proposed design on the right allocates more housing. Finally, as a designer, it is important that I be able to present my design alternatives and decision-making process with stakeholders for feedback and review. In our initial release, these reporting and presentation capabilities are strongly tied to the web map and data sharing story that is pervasive across the ArcGIS platform. At any point in the design process, GeoPlanner allows me to create a presentation map. This creates a new web map in ArcGIS Online that captures the current state of the application, including, for example, the visible layers and current map extent being viewed. Using this tool, I can quickly make a series of web maps that outlines the various layers, analysis, and alternative scenarios considered as part of my design process. These presentation web maps can now easily be used by other applications, such as Esri Maps for Office or Story Maps, to create a compelling presentation for my stakeholders. In fact, everything you do in GeoPlanner creates standard items, layers, and web maps that are shared with project groups in ArcGIS Online. Here you can see the presentation web maps that I just created, along with all of the other items used by my GeoPlanner project. Because these are standard ArcGIS items, they can be accessed anytime, anywhere, and from any device.